Okay, folks. Um, today we're just going to be having a wee look at repairing uh, an old image, restoring that back to of a, a decent quality. Now you'll notice that this image in particular has quite a lot of small scratches and marks on it, some water marks over here, um, and also this this kind of mark. I don't know really what that is. If it's a bit of tape that's maybe ripped off part of the, the photograph. Um, you know, but certainly made a bit of a mess to the photograph. So what we'll have to do is kind of try and tie, uh, tidy this up using a, a, a series of tools and techniques. Uh, we've already looked initially at the spot healing brush tool, which is going to help us so far with this image. But we'll look at a couple of other kind of um, tools um, similar to that, which you'll find under the, the same section, mainly the uh, the healing brush tool and the patch tool. Um, we'll also have a look at the clone stamp tool. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, like anything else, ignore these uh, these other layers. I've, I've done these for quickness to show you what the, the final result would, would kind of look like with applying these techniques. Um, what I would do is duplicate the original background layer to make a new layer for editing. So I'll call this new edit so that we know that it's the new one. And I'm just going to start working a wee on it. Now it's imperative that you we want to produce a, a professional um, final result to this image. So taking your time um, and making sure that you're zooming right in in the image using your navigator tool or magnifying glass to make sure you get all those tiny wee bits done professionally. You know, working this far out, you're never going to be as accurate as what you could be if you're zooming right in. So um, let's start off with the spot healing brush. We've used that before. Again, up here, you've got your properties, so you can adjust your size and your hardness. And once you're happy, aim it over the area you want to affect, and click, and that blends it in. Okay. So again, make sure that you're increasing and changing the size, and um, to make sure that it's completely covering the area that you want to to edit. Okay. Now let's introduce you then to how the the patch tool works. First of all, okay. And patch tool has two options up here. You have source and destination. And how it works is it allows you to generate a selection similar to the marquee tool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is draw near. I'm going to cover over this kind of dot. It looks like a bit of bleach or something has been dropped on the image and it's burnt away um, at the colour. Um, so I've got my area which is going to be generous enough to cover it, but it's not too big. And using destination. I'm going to copy that area and paste it on top. I've not had to do anything else apart from choose my selection and then move the, the selection over the top. We'll try it again up here. So I'm just going to draw nearby so that I've got a similar um, part of the image. Drag it over and drop it in place. Now where the healing brush tool comes into play is that once you have generated, say for example, a selection um, using uh, the patch tool, um, we can just deselect that to begin with. Using the healing brush tool, try and blend it in with the rest of the image. Now, you, you may not see a massive difference, but I'll show you how this works. Uh, similarly, um, to any other tools we've used, and you want to take a reference from nearby. And how this tool works or differs from the other two is that holding down Alt generates this kind of target and if you click once with the left mouse button what you've now done is taken a reference of that uh, the information within the diameter of that, that brush you actually see it moving. Now if I hold down the left mouse and just brush over the area just affected what it's going to try and do is heal this part of the image and blend it together. Now it can be used on things like speckles like this But it's a bit more time consuming having to take a reference and paint on top. And the clone stamp tool is very similar to that. You adjust your size. Left, hold down Alt, left click, and then paste on top. Where the clone tool can it, the clone tool differs, I guess, from the healing brush tool is that it tends to, you know, work better just for a, you know a pure kind of carbon copy of an area. Um, similar, I guess, to the to the patch tool. So these tools are all very similar, but work well together. 
and it's really just about trying to kind of choose the best tool for the job. Um, okay, now there is also the, the problem with this image here, or uh, this part of the image here, which is very drastic. I could work my way at it, taking a piece of the patch tool, popping it on top, etc., uh, and trying to cover it up completely. Um, but there is another method in these newer versions of Photoshop. Uh, what we do is use my marquee tool, and I'm going to select the area in question as close to as possible, and come round back up to the top. So this is the area selected. If I go to Edit, Fill, now have this option of Contents or Use Contents Aware. If I OK, I take its time to work on this. You'll notice now, like magic, what it's done is it's taken a reference to the image round about it and it's filled it in. Okay. Now, this tool in itself, although you know, it looks amazing uh, the way that it works, might always be the best tool for, for the job. But at this point here, we can you know easily just go in with our healing brush tool and then try and start blending over the, the, the kind of areas where it might look slightly patchy, taking a reference, using Alt, Clicking down and just kind of pasting over it and letting that kind of blend in. And for some of these larger areas as well, the content aware would, would also work. So they're the main kind of areas that we'd be looking at. I know I've kind of went through this a bit quickly. The last video that I made ended up far too long to be loaded up onto the YouTube channel. But, um, you know, getting a chance to use those tools bit by bit, taking your time. Restoring an old image requires a lot of patience um, and dedication to trying to get it right. Um, and as I said, between these tools, uh, clone stamp tool, and also this new function of filling a selection and using the content aware, um, will help you produce fantastic, fantastic results. Um, one thing we, we we had looked at also as well was with the completed image, we can use. The, the, go back into using this mask painting in the mask mode technique to um, color the image. And I'll just do a quick example here of setting up my brush. I've clicked into clicked into editing in my mask mode. You'll notice that that appears there, and you'll also notice that the, the layer turns grey. Now, using my brush and the default color black, I can start painting a selection. Now, what I'm going to do is very quickly just cover the skin of the face here. And I'm just going to ignore a bit of a thing that can be removed from it and it's B. to tidy that up. I can by using the rubber but just now what I'm going to do is actually just leave it as it is. Okay for the purpose of the tutorial. I'll be able to tidy it up and leave it anyway. Okay so I'm going to come out of this I'm coming out of the, the mask mode remember to always come out and double check to see where the perimeter is of your selection. As I thought it's running outside the face so I'm going to have to invert the selection. And now I'm ready to apply my Hue and saturation adjustment layer to that selection. Okay, so there's my hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to name that face or skin rather. And we click on uncolorize. I can then apply the skin tone that I'm looking for. Okay. Now, again, working with masks tool or mask layers or vector mask rather, we can 
further edit the selection we've generated by using um, the opposite colours, black and white. So white will be uh, painting onto the mask with white, will add colour to the image, and flipping around to black will take away. So that's what will allow me to tidy this up. And also cleverly move down and paint any other areas of skin that have appeared. Can come back to my earlier um, layer. I can continue to go into mass mode, select another area, generate my hue and saturation layer, selecting my colour and painting. Before you know it, I would have a full image in colour and fully restored. <laughs> 